so next up, we have a couple readings coming to you from uh, Discorder th Magazine uh, Disco Thrash column uh, publishing uh, underrepresented uh, writers that just is in line with the VOAF's V O A F theme um, of artists facing adversity. Um, and first, we're going to hear a couple poems from Todd McCluskey, a vinyl enthusiast, music lover, and member of the punk band Social Outcasts. Um, he can be heard weekly on CJSF's The Blurred Crusade uh, with the best of punk and post-punk. So let's give it up for Todd. All right, thank you all for coming today. Um, I'd like to say that uh, my sort of poetry uh, really fits in with this type of weather, nice and dark and dreary. Um, and it is great to be a part of this year's Vancouver Outsider Art Festival. And I'd also like to thank Discorder Magazine for asking me to read this afternoon. I have five rather short poems. Uh, they are part of a larger project that uh, I'm working on titled Secrets from the Deep Dark Sea. I'm gonna open with a poem called Ocean and then we'll blend it into one called Blue and then we'll go on from there. So we'll start with Ocean and it goes something like this. Shall we ride the tide again, wallow in the waves of love? The storm won't last, the rain has passed, the calm is here to stay. Waters warm on a summer's eve, just you wait and see. The ocean at night is deep, dark divinity. A vast oasis, tropic blue, slithering sand, destiny of dream. And I walk miles and miles to the shimmering sea, but in the end, what once was us is now only me. Next one's called Ripple. Uh, it's one of my insomnia projects. Uh, it's amazing how many good ideas come to you at three in the morning when you're trying to sleep. Always the way. Ripple. The dark succeeded where the lights once shone, swam in your ocean, the ripple was gone. And we had our chance, blurry times of lore, fluffy blue some days, then nothing much more. And I do recall the grayest of dawn. Summer nights were short and the rest is long. Laughter is now so far away, this bittersweet race has ran. When you melted, started to fade was the day my end began. And another happy little ditty. Uh, this one's called Ashes in a Box. Hidden in a dusty duffel bag, cozy in a corner, in the unsettled room where you once slept, protected from the outside world, as your fleeting time with the last of us is swept away, softly silence the finality that crushes any and all lingering faith. Does not seem right in the middle of the night, after all those nowhere dreams of wayward kings and queens, I awaken lost in nothing, but to merely and clearly to you, now and only ashes in a box. Thank you. And one more. This is the, the last one. This is called Quiet is the Killer. Quiet is the killer in the dead of night, sweet whisper of the black till the break of light. The inner world I enter into, the outer world I leave behind. A universe of strange and daring, a galaxy within my mind. Up the stairs into the attic, behind the cobwebs near the door, I dream away into freedom. I drift away and explore. 
Quiet is the killer in the dead of night. Sweet whisper of the block till the break of light. All right. Thank, thank you very much. So my name is Todd McCluskey. Um, just as my shameless plug portion, uh, I do have a punk band called Social Outcast Vancouver. And uh, we have some tunes on YouTube. We've got some new stuff coming out shortly. And also I do do a radio show called The Blurred Crusade, the best in punk and post-punk. And that can be heard on CGSF 90.1 FM, Wednesdays at noon, Thursdays at midnight, and podcasts anytime at cgsf.ca. Thanks to Scorter and thank you all for listening. Thank you so much, Todd. Um, our next reader, uh, Stance, about to read uh, chapter one of Gay Razor, dabbles very lightly in writing fiction, but mostly scribbles unfinished songs in their notebook. He mostly makes zines about the monsters that live in his shower curtain and various other places. If they had to choose an animal, it would be a crocodile or tied with a gator. Uh, if he had to pick a person, it would be Keanu Reeves. He, he lives and works on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. Uh, so here is Stance. Stance. Um, yeah, this is the first chapter of this queer erotic sci-fi novel that I started writing. It's in progress, and it's kind of horny, so just listen at your own discretion, I guess. Um, okay. Soft lips move their way down her stomach. Heavy breath exhales like fog into the dark sky. The hair on her arms are erect as a tingling sensation spreads through her body. Hot tongue trails between her thighs, attracting the cold air to her wet skin. She looks down her torso, locking eyes with Logan. Do you miss me, she whispers, biting the inside of her thigh. Eee! Toby's eyes shut open as the electrical shock darted through her temporal lobe. She could still feel her friend's teeth, but the ringing in her head was sharper. Sitting up from her computer, letters were pressed into the side of her face. Logan was gone, and she was back under the glowing fluorescence, caged in by the cement walls. The ringing ache in her head was unbearable, even though it was familiar. She rolled onto the metal floor and rested her head against the cool surface. Her meds had run out a few days ago, so it was all she had left to numb the pain. The neurolog machine had been left unplugged from the import in her temporal lobe since Logan. Dreaming about her was a burden, but Toby couldn't bring herself to plug in again. If she did, all that remained of her friend would be downloaded and sent away, sent away each night. Her dreams went further than the two of them ever had, so they were more fantasy than memory. But still, the reality of not being able to see her face or hear her voice was worse than the shooting pain in her brain. A loud knock at the door jolted Toby out of her head. Who is it? She yelled. Rente. Fuck, she muttered to herself. Walking to her door, she ran her hands through her greasy black hair and clicked the small red notch behind her ear. She slid open the eye-level gap in the door. The retina scan was waiting for her. Hi, Dave. Hello. He grinned back with greedy eyes. Do you have all my money this time? <laughs> yeah, hit me. Toby watched as the funds drained from her account. $34 was left. She slid close the metal slot as he gave her a smug little thumbs up. Sliding back to her computer, she picked up where she had left off last night. The scheduled broadcast played one of the usual married couples, spending time with their children, going to work, fucking. Eyes glazed over, Toby sat and waited for the pirate signal to be sent out. They seemed to be hacking into this channel a lot lately. After an over an hour of waiting, the video glitched and was replaced by two boys with green and pink eyeshadow. Black lipstick was smudged between them as their tongues traced each other all over. Yee! The ringing wasn't as intense as before, and Toby started mo stared, mesmerized by the intimate and fully illegal display in front of her. The video froze and green text typed out over top of it. Mirror shades, look for me. You are not one of them, Toby. The, mirror, or the monitor completely fuzzed over before she had a chance to type back. After a few seconds, the regular program came on again and the husband did the same on his wife. 
Did she just get hacked? Was she losing it from lack of sleep? And prolonged torture from this overactive conversion chip? How much longer could she live like this? Her shift selling candy and cigarettes didn't start for a few hours, but she needed food and a break from this apartment. She pulled on some black latex pants, zipping up the side of each leg. The inside of her iridescent boots was filled with a viscous gel that squished beneath her feet, but it had an outer layer that was as hard as the steel buckles covering it. Over her black tank top, she wore a jacket the same color as her boots, light as cellophane but heavily insulated. She stepped outside her building, the blur of a motorcycle ripped through the pounding rain. Into the street she ran, but the bike was gone as fast as it came. She stood there for a minute, forgetting to pull up her hood, and then followed the remnants of that unmistakable roar towards the tent city a few blocks down. She'd only seen a motorbike in the cyber criminals broadcast. Apparently they still used them. The familiar smell of smoke grew as she walked down her street towards the bridge and its encampment. Fires burned nonstop to stay warm, and the road was always occupied. The residents were very close. There was always safety in numbers for when the pigs came rolling through. The rain cascaded off the bridge like a waterfall. Underneath Toby, underneath, Toby weaved through the crowd, looking for any sign of the bike. Through all the people, she noticed someone in a long, dark coat staring at her. Their eyes were mirrors in the rain. Thank you. That's chapter one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thanks again for Dora for asking me to read and Disco Thrash and CITR and everyone for organizing. Uh, thanks. <laughs> First up is Marilise Habiambele. She's a queer Rwandan Canadian poet, activist, Loran scholar, and fourth year psychology student at the University of British Columbia. She's passionate about women's rights, yoga, and mental health. You can follow her on Instagram at Marilise Writes, that's M-A-R-Y-L-I-S-E-W-R-I-T-E-S, and she'll be reading some poems. So without further ado, here's Marilise. Hi everyone, um, thank you for coming to this reading. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be reading a few poems. Um, the first poem I'll be reading is called Ode to My Parents' Prayer Beat. Ode to my parents' prayer beads, looped around the rear view mirror of my father's car, the red paint and brown seats. Oh, how you held us together through hospital visits and grocery trips, church services and soccer games. You were my parents and their faith. And when you go, so will I. Prayer beads, what does God think of me now? my shaved head and queer desires. He gave me life and I wanted more of it. O seer of everything, yelling matches, puddles of tears, fear and anger, you stayed despite the complexities. How silly and lonely to be this human thing. How brave and honest to carry with you something no one else but you can feel. Second poem is called How I Choose to Remember You. How I Choose to Remember You. It's summer. Moses Sumney's new album plays loudly in my kitchen as I cut up baby bellas from the Persian food store. Vacancy in my chest, vacancy in my breath. No one who matters comes by to check on me. It's fall. I read about desire and forget where I am. You're high and I'm disappointed. The cold outside stops me from crying. Inside, I become a knife. Vacancy in my chest. Vacancy in my breath. No one who matters comes by to check on me. It's winter and I feel alone, watching portrait of a lady on fire in an old pair of Christmas pajamas that no longer fit me. Love in my hands, love in my eyes. Ma sorcière, mousson de mon cœur, dans mes rêves, je me retrouve dans tes bras. No one who matters comes by to check on me. It's spring, and I don't feel new. I listen to the same songs and wait for you to say I'm sorry. I don't know why I keep trying. Love in my hands, love in my eyes. No one who matters comes by to check on me. It's summer, 
But this time, you don't wish me well. This time, I don't tell you we should start over, that I was angry, you don't understand. This time, I don't talk about labor and freedom from nine to five. I just take the bus back home with my Thai curry, so I never have to miss you. No love in my hands, no love in my eyes. No one who matters comes by to check on me. And the last poem is called Anger, You Are No Stranger. Anger, you are no stranger. I'm sorry for not freeing you sooner. Anger, put down the blame. Your past is so far behind you. Anger, it's okay to cry. I promise it's not too late to start again. Anger, go on now, find peace. I promise you've been good to me. I leave you with the crows, flying south with my forgiveness. I leave you with the damp earth, warm with first love. I leave you with the red cedar woods, wide with loss. Go on now, find peace. I promise you've been good to me. Thank you so much, Marilise. Uh, let's hear it one more time. <laughs> All right, next up we have Tomaham Vega, who's a Lutsuke Dene Plains Cree poet and spoken word artist from unceded Musqueam, Squamish, and tsleil territory. Their Scorpio moon ass poems expose growth, resistance, and persistence as a hopeless two spirit non binary sad boy on occupied Turtle Island. In typical Aries Sun fashion, Tawahum completed the first ever indigenous spoken word residency at the Banff Center in 2018 while completing their BA in creative writing from KPU in 2019. Their full length collection of poetry is coming out spring 2022 from Night Wand Editions. So without further ado, here is Tom. Tawaham Natsika San, Saze Tawaham Sui. My name is Tawaham. Yeah, from Lutsoke Nene, I'm playing Cree, Setsi John Thomas, Yezador Thomas, Setsune Mary Crooked Hands, Aqua Nukum, Teresa Dume, just properly naming my relations as I'm not from here, but I've got just a couple poems to share with y'all. Um, and uh, this first one is a little bit more about uh, some resistance stuff. I wrote it in court after uh, I was arrested for protesting Trans Mountain Pipeline, so uh, here you go. <clears throat> Call it the ex-cop diaries, the traveling hierarchies. Needle nose, executive suite, it's conjecture, my lord, but I believe he does cocaine. This man put men in cups for 36 years before becoming security manager for Trans Mountain. He dons a Harper haircut and stands with entitlement abreast of red-coated, fur-traded, gold mined, court-ordered, fort border drawn, quartered, pox, spread a deregulated, wealth hoarded, mass sacred, lived backward, booze smuggled, gun holstered, blade scabbard, treaty broker, baby boomer, divide conquered, townhouse gated, clan faded, children taken, bloodbath weighted, correctly stated, minds erased, and Canadian valued. <laughs> Settler, soldier. Except, instead of spreading disease and igniting the cannon, he watches cameras and pushes pencils to lay his pipes to rest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can find my stuff online. I have a single that's on Spotify if you ever want to check it out. I'm not performing that for y'all, but I got to shout it out. Um, I have big love to CITR. They've been giving me big love all year to be honest they've like interviewed me they put me on my podcast now i'm here so i have so much love for the whole disco trash discorder team everybody that like does stuff with ubc so big love thank you yeah um this uh other poem i'm going to share with you is the only other poem i'll share with you it's called uh 
sanctum after Julian Randall. <clears throat> it went like this. I became stuck in that room. When I say I was stuck in that room, I mean the room was all holes. I mean, I wasn't crawling out of the holes. I was rummaging a maze of tunnels. My grief, stricken long before I lost my brother. I scoured drywall cavern through until then. And I knew it about five weeks in. I wasn't gonna be passing any of my classes, but I did always take my meds. You see the basement suite, it was a mansion, a playhouse, a home for this clown. I knew what kind of October day it was from the hot sticky taste of lemon haze tokes from my bright orange pipe. I held my breath for two years underground. I lived behind the cemetery and below. The room was all grave, so I slept. Depression, in bed, on the computer, with friends, or playing games, manipulation. When she climbed into this hole with me, I realized momentarily how little I wanted to remain. I coughed more than I admit. Whenever anyone climbed into this hole with me, I realized, mm. Mm. no, back it up a couple lines. When she climbed into this hole with me, it was only a matter of how many repeated visits before I made her leave. I coughed more than I admit. Whenever anyone climbed into this hole with me, I realized momentarily how little I wanted to remain. I stopped dreaming. Fantasies blinked on the computer display instead. And at night, streetlight would bounce down a tunnel, off gravel, reflecting against windowsill, and slip into blinds. I'm trying to say that this underground was darkened, yet still somehow a light. Though I seem to remember power outages that lasted weeks. I praised the dark, and could have asphyxiated rubble smell still thick on my tongue and nostrils. You see, the day only ever came in the streaks of momentary blue. So, with a pack of cigarettes per day or more, I held a ceremony to embrace the night. With a plastic bag from Safeway, filled with butts and ash, a gathering monument in the corner of the room. I choked out years from my life digging deeper, with a rotation of shovels, video games, cannabis, dexedrine, sedatives, and fakelessness. I didn't respond to texts. I wouldn't call my sister back. Now I drop my classes online without ever leaving the pit. Still received my funding check for November though. They didn't know. The valley between spine and shoulder blade then became sore. What was I doing majoring in information technology? I would say, from a young age I dreamt of living in a hole. Instead I breathed life into a nightmare. An agoraphobic labyrinth I both became and was trapped inside of. And when I was finally excavated from those holes, the rattle from gravel unearthed my lungs, gasping. And I cried dust, and dust, and dust. Yeah, must see Joe, hey, hey. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you so much. Um, next is the Haba Shaman, and we're gonna take a few minutes to set up. Thank you all so much for being here. 